So this is what we have been waiting for quite a long time, the LFO New Pro, the very first LFO device aiming at the upper mid range that boasts a Snapdragon Herd. To be more exact, it's a Snapdragon 660 that is powering this phone and that alone already is a highlight. In this review, we are going to check out this beauty in detail to figure out how good it really is. I am Christopher for CMM, enjoy watching. A big thanks goes to Gearbest who have been kind enough to provide us with the review unit as one of the first reviewers out there. A link to the shop is placed down below in the video description. In terms of design, the LFO New Pro is just gorgeous. Yes, the design isn't entirely original since we have seen similar things from Samsung or Xiaomi already, but that doesn't change anything about the fact that this one is a premium phone with a top-notch build quality. It boasts a dual glass design and the glass on the front is actually curved to the left and right and the same applies to the rear glass as well which is also curved towards the aforementioned sides. The curve transitions into a very nice metal frame which itself is slightly rounded, thus continuing the glass's curve, resulting in a very comfy hand feel. The transition from the glass to the metal feels very smooth since there is no large gap. They did a great job in terms of precision there. The metal frame, in all of the available color options, comes with a glossy finish, but still, the finish is surprisingly sturdy and hasn't suffered from any damage yet, even though we had the phone in a bicycle mount several times with no protection whatsoever. Despite the dual glass design, the LFO New Pro is a pretty sturdy phone with no flex. That's especially surprising when considering the thickness of just 8.3 mm. The weight is very comfy at 170 grams and kinda underlines the premium build. Remaining parts of the build are top notch too. The buttons sit firmly in place, there are no large gaps, there is no squeaking anywhere and also no rattling parts. It's just a very well made phone. What's very nice to see as well is that the camera module despite the thin body doesn't stick out of it but even is recessed a bit so it is well protected from any scratches. The SIM tray interestingly has been placed on the upper frame instead of the usual left or right placement. It can take either two nano SIM cards or one nano SIM card and one micro SD card. One more highlight of the LFO New Pro can be found on its rear, and that's the LFO logo. They did something pretty unusual there and equipped this one with an LED which makes the logo light up as soon as there is an incoming call. When turning the LFO New Pro on for the very first time, the wow effect is big once the screen lights up for the very first time. The screen to body ratio of this phone is quite amazing thanks to the very narrow bezels on all of its sides, which makes the LFO New Pro a very compact phone. This full view screen comes in 2x1 format, operates at a resolution of 2160 by 1080 pixels and is based on flexible AMOLED technology. It is using a pentile matrix which means that the pixel density looks a bit lower than on a similar LCD panel but still you only notice that upon very close inspection and not during regular use. The screen does not only come with rounded corners but it's also curved just like the glass. This gives the picture some nice plastic effect and also makes the slim left and right bezels appear even slimmer. Sometimes it really looks like the display is almost bezel-less, which is great. The quality of the used AMOLED panel is really good and it gets bright enough to ensure a decent outdoor readability. At night it can get dim enough to be easy on the eyes. The picture looks great, the contrast ratio is top notch, colors look intense, vivid, yet not candy like, but just realistic. When playing a bit with the display settings, which allow you to change the color temperature, the screen reaches a very balanced picture which is just great for watching videos, movies, pictures or playing your favorite games. What's very nice to see is that the viewing angles are good too. Often AMOLED screens show a colorful shimmer at steep angles, which is not the case here. The only minor flaw it has is that large white areas can get a little greenish at steep angles, but in real life use you pretty much never notice that. Another nice touch is that the screen doesn't show any graininess or stripes on low brightness, which for example was an issue on the Xiaomi Mi Note 2, which also offered a curved AMOLED screen. There is a small issue though and that's some artifact like green halo effect that sometimes appears on contrast heavy pictures on specific lower brightness levels. That's however not an issue with the screen itself but rather a bug in the screen driver. To get rid of this strange effect you simply have to pull the brightness down to the minimum or choose a higher brightness level. So it's not a big deal but still Elephone should fix that as soon as possible to make sure the picture looks equally good on all brightness levels. Another 
thing that sticks out is a slight light sheen coming out of the glass's edge. It looks like Elephone missed coating this with some opaque paint. The result is a light show that looks similar to the MB light some televisions have. Now if you consider that as a flaw or as a nice looking gimmick is totally up to you. The screen glass is made from Gorilla Glass 5 according to Elephone and the same applies to the rear glass. So far the front has indeed remained free of scratches despite not using a case or protector. The rear has got some minor scratches due to not taking much care while placing it on surfaces, but it still looks beautiful since the scratches are hardly visible. What's interesting is that Elephone applied a grease repellent coating to both the front and the rear glass. The front is pretty much always clean when pulling the phone out of your pocket. The rear glass still doesn't remain clean all the time, but it is much easier to clean than the glass rears of many other phones. Another interesting thing is that the glass rear appears to be much less slippery than on other devices. Some Xiaomi phones we have tested in the past slowly slid across tables by themselves and eventually dropped on the floor, but the U Pro actually never did that. The touchscreen of the U Pro supports up to 10 fingers and it is really a good one. It never had any kind of hiccups and typing away on it fast is a breeze. The input delay is just very minimal, so typing doesn't feel jerky at all. Something that could be improved a little is palm rejection. Now don't get this wrong, the U Pro has palm rejection, so you don't trigger something by touching the edges of the screen all the time, but its reliability should be improved. It doesn't happen often enough to be annoying, but sometimes you still Still trigger stuff accidentally. Pegging a Snapdragon 660, the Elephone U Pro comes with a pretty powerful mid-range SoC by Qualcomm. This one is based on 8 cryo cores that are clocked with a maximum of 2.2 GHz. In the Antutu benchmark, the U Pro reaches 140,000 points, which is a little better than on the similar spec Xiaomi Mi Note 3. The result is also confirmed by other benchmarks like Geekbench 4, in which the U Pro also scores slightly higher than a Mi Note 3. What's very nice to see is that the U Pro is capable of delivering its performance even in the long run. There are no thermal issues, so even under continuously high load, the processor doesn't show any signs of massive thermal throttling. The real-life performance of the Elephone U Pro is very satisfying and the phone feels just a lot smoother and snappier than any Elephone devices we have tested before. It feels just like you would expect from a Snapdragon 660 powered phone. There are some reports out there claiming that the phone does stutter, but to be honest we can't confirm that at all. Comparing it to the Mi Note 3 we have also tested, it feels just the same. But maybe that's due to different firmware versions, since it looks like some reviewers had a beta firmware on their devices, but more on that later. Anyone into gaming will surely love the Elephone U Pro. The Adreno 512 GPU inside the Snapdragon 660 is sufficiently powerful to run all of the most demanding titles out there with no stutter whatsoever. Demanding titles like Unkilled, Asphalt Extreme and Oz Broken Kingdom all run with a very good frame rate at highest graphics settings, delivering a great graphical performance. The only game we experienced some minor stuttering in was Gear Club, which however seems to be a software issue and not related to the Snapdragon 660 since it runs smooth on a Xiaomi Mi Note 3. Maybe some update will fix that. When it comes to multitasking, the 6GB version of the Elephone U Pro we tested performs great as well. The LPDDR4X RAM used inside of there is plenty of fast, reaching close to 10GB per second of throughput. And the RAM management is decent as well. Apps that have been opened in the morning will still be running in the evening, opening immediately after tapping the icon. Also when opening a huge number of apps, switching between them works flawlessly without any reloading and that even works when you open multiple games and let them run in the background. The 128 GB of internal memory when looking at the benchmark results might seem a little slow, but that's just since Elephone uses eMMC memory instead of UFS memory, for which the speed still is decent. Surprisingly, the eMMC memory is not a bottleneck. You will be surprised when comparing app loading times with random UFS powered devices. Often the Elephone U Pro opens applications noticeably faster, which is a big surprise. What sets the Elephone U Pro apart from most other Snapdragon 660 powered phones is that despite the large internal memory you can still expand it using microSD cards. Using a 128GB card we doubled up the memory. If needed you can even format the SD card as an internal memory, using it not only for personal data but also apps and games. What's a bit sad is that the Elephone U Pro only packs an OTG capable USB 2.0 Type-C port. If Elephone would have used a real USB 3.1 spec port with video out, this would have been a serious advantage over competing products.
The LFON U Pro packs a status LED which is placed above the screen and can not only show red, green and blue but also mixed colors like white and purple. The fingerprint scanner on the phone's rear isn't as fast as on the Xiaomi Mi Note 3 but it still works very well. It has no issues handling wet or oily or even swollen fingers and is great to use in everyday life. What could have been improved is the positioning of the sensor though since it easily happens that you touch the camera lens when unlocking the phone, leaving smudges on it. In the future, the LF1 U Pro will also support Face Unlock, which is supposed to come with one of the next OTA updates. Some reviewers are already using a firmware version that supports Face Unlock and their reports are mostly positive. Something that LF1 needs to sort out are some sensor issues. The LF1 U Pro packs everything you will ever need, but there are hiccups. The compass doesn't work reliably and has to be recalibrated often. The biggest issue, however, is the accelerometer, which isn't calibrated correctly and always steers to the left when the phone lies flat on a table. This is annoying because it's interfering with games controlled with the accelerometer and also causes the phone to rotate the screen to landscape mode way too fast when just slightly tilting it to the left. The LF1 U Pro already runs Android 8.0 Oreo and the security patch at the time of testing was up to date. LF1 this time went for a customized UI and that actually isn't a disadvantage in this case. A lot of small Chinese phone makers tried to do their own Android flavors in the past but pretty much always failed. Often, such Android flavors are overloaded with unnecessary stuff full of bugs and just don't seem ready for daily use. But Elephone actually managed to deliver something nice here. The OS is a nice mixture of stock Android and their very own UI elements which looks very nice and works like a charm. They also pack the U Pro with quite some additional features and that already starts with the way you use the phone. You can select between classic on-screen buttons and gestures, the latter ones enable you to use the whole screen for apps and actually has been our preferred way of using the U Pro on a daily basis. Anyone who still prefers on-screen keys though can re-enable them in the settings. Elephone actually changed how the buttons look and yes, they do look nice. They even give you some control over how the buttons are arranged and how they look like. There also is a standard Android button design just in case you prefer that. The status LED got a bunch of settings as well. You can choose if the LED should display the charging state, notifications or both of them. In addition, you can also select specific colors for different notification categories. When calls are incoming, the LF1 U Pro generates a nice light show on its screen edges, matching the rhythm of the music, which looks stunning at night. The gallery application is an LF1 specific piece of software and offers plenty of editing options. You can, for example, add a bouquet effect to selfies or portraits after shooting them, which works surprisingly well given the picture is bright enough and the background is differentiated enough. A theming app gives you some control over how the system looks like, but that mostly applies to the launcher and its application icons. What's surprising is that the LF1 U Pro packs support for FM radio, which is something you usually don't see on Snapdragon powered devices. As all LF1 devices in the past, the LF1 U Pro supports a large variety of different languages you can choose from. The Google Play Store comes pre-installed and works without any issues, including all of the Google apps. Elephone went for a pretty clean Android experience and does not ship any unnecessary bloatware or untranslated Chinese apps. Considering that we tested this phone with the first public firmware version, it's surprising how smooth and stable the phone already runs. In terms of bugs, we just noticed two minor issues. First, the on-screen keyboard sometimes covers text fields so you can't see what you are typing and second, in some games UI elements are sometimes cut off on the screen's edges. The LF1 U Pro in general offers a good mobile reception quality and packs Band 20 LTE support. What we noticed though is that in areas with weak coverage, you are able to cut off the signal by placing a hand on the bottom of the phone. Also, the LF1 U Pro unfortunately does not yet support frequencies specific to some American countries and it is unknown if there will be a special version to fix that. The Wi-Fi module packs support for the AC standard but doesn't use MIMO, so the maximum data rate you will see is around 300 Mbit per second. Reception quality is great and there never have been any hiccups. Bluetooth 5.0 is supported as well and offers a good reception quality too. The phone easily covers an entire floor with a stable signal. Furthermore, the U Pro packs NFC support, the antenna is placed in the upper rear and works perfectly fine. GPS is handled quite well too. First fix took a little longer, but then it got fast and the phone locks between 17 to 19 satellites. GPS tracking works well, with the only minor flaw being a slight inaccuracy when tracking inside a pocket, but there is no location jumps or anything like that. Navigation works completely flawless and the phone reacts quite fast to any changes in the route. 
The media speakers where Alephone should put some focus on future updates. Basically, the speaker isn't too bad, being capable of delivering a high volume without scratching and even basses. But the mix down isn't optimal right now. The heights and mids often appear a bit too intense, leaving the speaker less bass heavy than it could be. The Pro does not have a 3.5mm jack, but it comes with a very decent Type-C to 3.5mm adapter which sounds awesome and this makes up for that. One very big surprise was how good the phone call quality is on both ends, even when just using a GSM network without any HD call support. The earpiece sounds very nice and produces a rich full sound that most phones unfortunately can't deliver. In addition, the noise cancelling works great and handles noise environments like a charm. The main camera is based on a rear dual camera setup consisting of two 30 megapixel sensors, which however remain unspecified. The aperture value is f2.2, the front camera is a 8 megapixel unit with a larger f2.0 aperture. The bouquet mode of the main camera can produce nice looking pictures, but at the current state does not seem quite ready, it just isn't very reliable. Often you need multiple tries until you finally get a proper result and there are situations in which it is almost impossible to use the bouquet mode. Also at night the bouquet mode ceases to work. Normal daylight pictures mostly do look fine, but also here there sometimes are exceptions. From time to time there are pictures that look a little bit blurry, but that seems to be a software issue since on the preview they always look sharp. But all in all at daylight the camera is satisfying. When it comes to low light photography the camera unfortunately becomes useless and isn't even suitable for snapshots. The LED flash only helps to a certain degree. If the distance to the subject isn't too high pictures look ok, but with a greater distance pictures look like crap. Considering the price range this phone is situated in, this is more than embarrassing for Elephone. Let's see if they will be able to improve low light performance with updates. The front camera delivers pretty decent results at daylight, but also with synthetic light given that it's bright enough. For night shots there is a screen flash, but sadly it isn't bright enough to deliver a good quality. The main camera can record videos in 4K DCI, 4K UHD, Full HD, HD and below. EIS is available starting at Full HD and below, but unfortunately not useful since it creates an ugly stutter. In terms of quality the 4K footage looks ok and impresses with a very accurate and extremely fast autofocus. A flaw however is the reddish tint. When selecting Full HD resolution this reddish tint disappears. Also it seems like Full HD footage shows more detail due to less compression artifacts, so anyone more into quality rather than resolution should use the Full HD setting. The front camera also records in Full HD and delivers a decent quality. The audio quality of the videos is ok, but the volume could be a little higher and the noise cancelling sometimes appears to be a bit too aggressive. The 3550mAh battery makes the Elephone U Pro last for one day easily, even when using it heavily. Still, battery life can't be called perfect. Looking at the similar Xiaomi Mi Note 3, which reached a screen on time of up to 20 hours, there is certainly more room for improvement, especially the standby consumption needs to be optimized a lot. The battery is charged via Quick Charge 3.0, which takes 1.5 hours from 20 to 100%. Alternatively, you can also use wireless charging, which takes 3.5 hours for the same charge using a 5 watts charger. Verdict: The Elephone U Pro is an important shout out into the world of China phones. It shows the potential that even small brands from China have and what can be achieved by focusing on the essentials instead of releasing a new phone every month. Elephone with the U Pro completes its transformation and is setting sales for a promising future. The days when Elephone launched like two new devices every month have been over since 2017 and the Elephone U Pro is the result of focusing the freed resources for one year. 
The Elephone U Pro is an example for what the other small phone makers from China are doing wrong. Yes, we are looking at you, Ulephone, Verni, Umidici and all the others. The Elephone U Pro is superior to anything these brands have ever made. This applies to build quality, screen, technology and software. But at the very same time that's a big problem for Elephone. The U Pro is situated in a previously untouched price range in which different expectations apply. Without a doubt the Elephone U Pro is a great device but it's not cheap either and this is the problem. From a smartphone which costs between 340 and 380 euros one expects fewer flaws. However, the Elephone U Pro has quite a lot of flaws. Although those are mostly software bugs, such a start always leaves a bad aftertaste and even if Elephone might fix all of them with software updates, many potential buyers might have already been scared off by that. Nevertheless, it's important for Elephone not to be distracted by this. They should really continue to focus resources on few but good devices and try to get off a smoother start in the future with their next phone. The final question that arises is whether the Elephone U Pro is worth its money. The answer is yes and no. It really depends on what you expect and where your priorities lie. Whoever is willing to spend the money taking into account all the bugs you just heard of should do so. Elephone deserves that. But everyone else should probably wait and see what Elephone actually improves with the next updates. We will as usual keep you updated about that. And that's the end of this review. A shop link and more information is located down in the video description. I was Christopher for CMM. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.